Welcome back. I'm Steve. I'm Lynn. And, and this, this is, is our, our bike, bike shop. shop. Um, we have two topics tonight. Sure. First. Um, all right. So we're going to talk a little bit about actually the business side of the shop, uh, like pricing structures and stuff, because that, that seems to be a hot topic lately. And it, it's come up a few times this, this week in the shop because there's a lot of closeouts and sales and that type of thing. And then uh, before we get to that really quick, because this is like we've had some ridiculous, weird weather. Um, I'm not going to complain about it. No, I uh, say it's, yeah. it's great. So, um, well, I guess I will complain about it. So, like, it, it totally put a total damper on, like, fat bike business and fat bike sales, that type of thing. So, which is in the off-season, kind of a nice filler. Uh, and then, um, yeah, I, like, we're literally riding outside right now. So, like... It was so late in the season that, like, we didn't even have, like, trainer discussions with people mm -hmm. till, like, late in the season. But So, anyway, but that said, uh, a couple things that came up today. Somebody had asked me about, um, I think it was actually more, like, toe covers, booties, that type of thing. Like, you know, you either got, like, really cold stuff or you got your summer stuff. But we could spend all day talking about this stuff. But uh, one really awesome thing that I like and we're so used to seeing like the the pogies for flat bars for fat biking mm -hmm. but uh bar mitts make some for drop bar bikes we, we keep them in the shop there's a variety of kind uh I absolutely love these for like if it's if it's uh above 40 45 I'm not going to use them uh but when it's like 30 some degrees and I'm drop bar riding these knock the wind chill off and I can wear a much lighter glove Super awesome if you get cold hands. Um, and they make, you know, different styles of them. They make one that you can kind of go over the, the, the drops and the hoods. I have the kind of the heavier thermal ones that go over the hoods. Um, absolutely love them. I don't know. Wednesday, I did a long ride, but it was it's oh, almost like 50 degrees. I'd say it was 50-ish. So I, I, didn't, I didn't use them, but um, I, I personally use them a lot in the end of the season like fall and then in the spring like if i ride home from the shop at night it's the sun's down it's dark so even if it hit 45 degrees during the day it's by the time i roll in my driveway and my bike it it's, might be 28 or 35 degrees or something so um but based on the weather i'll be i'll be riding doing some night rides home next week for sure so um okay. anyway and before we jump do you okay you mentioned lightweight gloves do you ever not wear gloves yeah, there was actually, um, back in December, it depends on how hard you're riding. Like, I was, I don't know, I'd start off with some lighter weight gloves, but then I was, I was actually kind of riding hard, and I actually was, it was like 35 degrees, and I had no gloves on um, in here. I actually stuffed my gloves in my back pocket. Um, okay. It kind of, kind of depends. Okay. So, but there's all kinds of, like, whatever. I could go and I should do, like, a whole... Thing about this bike in general um but set up like anyway but we, we won't do that today um do we want to talk about the pricing stuff yep so uh, so we're done with the product and now we're talking pricing and sales when sales happen or pr uh, pricing updates yeah so like so this came up right this week because mm -hmm. like sram had a um release of map and so we we don't we don't set our prices in the bike shop, really. So, like, the manufacturers have a MSRP, Manufacturer's Suggested Retail. Um, they can't tell us what to sell the product for, right? So we can, we can sell it for whatever we want, but they, they have a suggested price. Um, but what they can dictate to us is what we can advertise things for. So there's a lot of products that have, like, a minimum advertised price. Most manufacturers, I think most of them, their minimum advertised price, we call it MAP, is the same as their MSRP. Correct. And, like, I mean, let's be clear about it. Like, we don't want to sell this stuff less, right? Like, the, there's not massive amounts of margin in the in the, the bike business. Like, that the margin that's there is, like, just enough to kind of pay for your lights and your rent and, and employees. If there was extra, we'd, we'd have a bunch of people standing around or something, right? And we, we don't. Um, but... Um, but there's there's obviously sales too, so, um, so keep me on track yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. So when you're talking about maps, when you're talking about advertise, we're talking about like 
like on our like our website specifically? Yeah, so like if we were to go, uh, let's just say, uh, I, I mean, I could take like a, a tire, for example. Like I, if like if I had a Maxxis tire on our website listed below map, I'd probably get an email warning. Mm -hmm. Like we we we've gotten them from various brands. Like usually it's like if there's like a Thanksgiving sale or something like that, and maybe we don't flip the switch on our our back end system and it and it, the update doesn't happen overnight in time to put the prices back to normal. Like we literally get like automated emails. Like they they have scanners that go out there and check shops websites. Um, but like Maxis is one in general. They they have a map that is actually less than their MSRP, right? Correct. But it's not consistent. It's not it's, like it's a, not like a certain percentage. It's not yeah. per, a percent or a certain dollar it's amount. Close. It's, it's like eight to ten percent or something. But like we that. Have, but there's a they have a they have a spreadsheet or you know there's yeah. a system that so, we can. So check. our pricing gets downloaded from the the manufacturers. So um, like Maxis is for one for example. Like we just sell everything at the minimum advertised price. And we, we kind of have to. So we can either make the decision to just not have Maxxis tires um, it, or put them all in our store at full retail and never sell any or just sell them at MAP and, you know, still gain, still keep the Maxxis tire customers coming in so we can be relevant with big online retailers. I mean, I, I know there's always some place out there where somebody's like breaking MAP and they somehow they got an overstock of something and sure. or the, wherever they're getting them from like over overstock manufactured tires or something but anyway um and then the one that the one that triggered this kind of conversation was the SRAM stuff this week so last year there was a lot of SRAM sales and to be clear some of those actually were not SRAM sales like SRAM wasn't putting stuff on sale and selling it to us at a lower cost so then we could go turn it they were basically taking a map break. So they took a break from the minimum advertised price. Or that... enforcing the, the, the map pricing guidelines. Well, it's like the same thing, right? Yeah. So like they basically said, we're, re we're removing map on these products for this amount of period. Or sometimes they will say, um, we've lowered map by 20%. So you are allowed to sell these certain products at 20% off for this time period. Um, usually they'll do that like a manufacturer like that they're going to do that because um, they're either sitting on stock and they have a new product coming out um, or um, there's they know that either bike shops or some of these really big online retailers are sitting on piles of the product and they need to move them and uh, if those retailers don't move them then they're not going to buy the new stuff that SRAM has coming. And so they're saying, hey, I know you got stuff to move. We don't really care what you sell it at at this point. Get it out the door and, and move it. So good for you as the, the customer. I mean, the way that works in the shop is because there's instances where there's a map break. And so you might see something on sale and we have it in our shop. We may not put that product on sale because maybe I just have one of them. And I'm always going to keep a GX um 12 speed eagle cassette in stock because we do service and whatnot i'm not you know like one of these big online retailers where i'm sitting on 300 of them and i'm i need to i need to move them because i overbought which is is basically what you're seeing right now from all the covid stuff like, so it's like cash flow right yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. um did i they kind of yeah cover you right? covered it so yeah. like for instance sram right now has a sale we, we we might have some stuff that we may be a little overstocked on or it's old we might move it but um like like this is this, somebody had mentioned in the shop that oh sram has a sale and we're like no that sram doesn't actually have a sale they've said you are allowed to advertise whatever you want on these certain class of products um yeah. for going forward because they they know there's a bunch of inventory that's got to get moved um and they released a bunch of new product last year. So they, they want to sell that product. They won't sell it until they move the old stuff. So Yeah. Yeah. I think that. So um, So then, okay, so we talked about MAP, though. But then what happens when a manufacturer or vendor has a sale? This is, this is not relating to MAP, but just like a... Like, a, like a, let's say like a Garmin or something? Yeah, so Garmin yeah. has a sale. So um, Garmin's actually fantastic to work with on this. 
So when Garmin runs a, runs a sale, um, one, they're really good about letting us, giving us a heads up and, and, and saying, hey, this stuff's on sale. Um, as opposed to, there, there's some other manufacturers we've worked with that we find out about their sale from an Instagram post and we're like, hey, thanks, <laughs> thanks for the heads up. Um, but Garmin's really awesome. So um, they will, they, they let us know, we get a note, it, even if it's the day or two before, sometimes, mm -hmm. You know, they, they might know ahead, but the, um, um, and then they'll actually work with us on it. So we're not going to get our full margin back out of it, but usually we, they like meet us in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Which is pretty, which is actually much more generous than a lot of the manufacturers. So we've had products in here where we've literally just put in our like big order for this stuff and then they run a surprise sale like a month later and we've already bought everything at full wholesale and they're literally putting it on the sale for what we just paid for it. Um, and then we're just kind of, kind of have to go along with it. So, yeah. Otherwise, um, yeah. You, know, you know, they'll let us buy it back, buy more to replace it, but it's usually never as cheap as the sale is, right? True. Like, True. <laughs> it's kind of laughable sometimes, but so that's a scenario. Um, like I said, yeah. So Garmin's really, they're, they're actually really awesome about it. Um, and, um, yeah, us being a super small shop, it's actually really nice how they work with us, too. Um, so we, we, they make really good products, and they're really awesome to work with. So that, that's why we really kind of go that way with Garmin. Yep. Um, the, just like you as the customer, I appreciate a shop that works with you on stuff. Like we appreciate vendors that work with us well. So like I, Garmin is one of our like highly noted vendors that is really awesome to work with. So yep. and, and makes good product too. Okay. Um, I, I think the other one like is bikes another or another. Yeah. One so let's out? say one of our vendors has a bike sale. Yeah. So the way the the boy this this one kind of gets messy. Um, so in the past. Uh, let's just say when we worked with a big brand that we, we don't have in the shop anymore, but um, they were pretty predictable on like a spring sale and fall sale, and we kind of would know it's coming type of deal. Um, and then we, we, could, we would be able to buy those bikes during the sale at a cheaper price. Is that right? Correct, at a lower price. Yeah, yeah. not as much as the sale. Correct. But the, their, their thought, again, was, well, you're going to get to sell more bikes than you would have anyway, so... Um, it, it's, yeah, I, I could basically argue that, well, yeah, but then when they go back to retail, I won't sell them. So mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't really work out ahead. Right. Um, the, uh, um, um, help me out here. Where am I going with so, this? So, so typically when a, when a bike, let, let's say a current vendor that we have that has a bike sale. Yeah. So, and then if we've already bought the bikes, uh, most cases, they put them on sale. It, we're just kind of out. Correct. We're right? just, we just rolled the. the We've already bought the bikes. Yep. It's it's not um, very 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 few times do they actually issue a credit back um, for them. There are brands that do, and we do have brands in our shop that, depending on when we purchase those bikes, if it was pretty close to the sale, they they will they will They'll work, work with, with us, us. right. Yep. Yep. Like, I, I know, like, the salsa has salsa done that, has done that in the past. for us, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, um, uh, so actually, salsa's been pretty good mm -hmm. with, with that. Yep. So, um, and then... Um, and if we see, let's say, a, a bike, if they go to the, 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 let's say, the Niner website that sees us, that they see a sale on the Niner website um, about us getting that bike at, at a sale price. Yeah, so, if, like, if you go to Niner's website and they've got some stuff on sale, I, I, we can get you that product and Niner will work with us to make sure that it's um, we're we're they're going to lower our cost to make sure we can get it to you at the sale price mm -hmm. type of thing. If we already have it, we're not. <laughs> it yeah. is what it is. We can buy we can buy replacement at that at that cost. But to um, backfill what we have, I would also say Niner is really good to work with uh, on that on that too as well because we we build most we we build the Niner up here so we have a little more room to work with there anyway. Yeah. Um, but um, I, did we cover that? Yeah, we covered that. Yeah. 
I don't I don't so, think we missed anything. Anyway, we got like the brands that we carry in our shop and we're we're we tend to migrate and turn toward well, one we pick brands. This is maybe a little off topic, but it's kind of related to it. So we end up with brands in our shop because like we literally want to ride the stuff and we, we like the product. So mm -hmm. like we'll we'll try it out if there's something out there that I mean I'm I'm terrible at it. Terrible, good, however you want to look at it. Like I see stuff that I want to ride and I want to test or I want to play with. Like I go get it and if I like it, it ends up in our shop. If I don't like it, it mm. like you're not going to see it in the shop. Or if I bring it in and I use it and we end up not liking it, we, we get rid of it. Correct. Or yeah. maybe customers have given us negative yeah. feedback. We just... Yeah, we, we'll, we'll, we'll take your negative feedback. Yeah. There, the, there's always one off stuff too. Sure. But um, yeah, I mean, um, just because somebody has some negative feedback on it, if you know the other 99 people out of 100 that use it in our shop have a good experience with it, it's sure <laughs> the numbers count. <laughs> um, the uh, um, but yeah, so that's so like brands. One, we like the product, and then two, if the brand is really good to work with, like that's that's it's gonna stay in our shop. Yeah. Like if they work with us on that on that stuff, so. Um, if, if they're hard to work with or they run too many sales and we can't keep up with it and we are going to lose money selling their product, we're, we're, we're not going to sell their products anymore. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, anyway, but that, that's a little side note, I guess, on how the brands come, but it all ties together. Yeah. Maybe just a little bit back end, yeah. back end knowledge, I guess, of the business but, and pricing. Yeah. And, and, and maybe we'll probably do more of this stuff. And what sparked it, if you're if you're still following along, and, and I'll probably do an entire kind of thing about this, is I thought about, because YouTube has the shorts, I thought about doing a short rant with Steve um, and sharing some of this stuff. But the um, I, I, I every day, like I kind of check the socials or whatever. I'm not really into social media much anymore. In fact, I, I kind of got off of Facebook. But from a business standpoint, I kind of got to keep up of what's going on there. And there is so much bad information out on YouTube and internet forums. It's, it's laughable. Um, sometimes somebody will come to the shop and be like, oh, I just read this thing on a forum. And I'm, I go check the forums and I check to see what's kind of live on YouTube and that type of thing so I can see what people are looking at. And I, more often than not, I find bad information or like, the forums are terrible or incorrect just not okay. yeah um anyway um so so that's a little bit what sparked us starting to just do youtube out of frustration of yeah so anyway hope you enjoy it um if you have stuff you want to know about uh ask yeah. like this stuff comes up because somebody this week asked us about like hey what are you using for gear this time of year and um, the pricing thing came up because of that came up with a customer in the store specific to seeing some some SRAM sales. So, yeah. um, and uh, that's what we're talking about. But anyway, I think we covered else? everything. Yeah, I think we covered everything. Good. We'll oh. uh, we'll shut her down before I keep going on and on. So thanks for stop. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs>